Hi guys, Pete here from dancemusicproduction.com and in this video I want to take a really quick look at the 1.2 update to Extra Serum. If you head over to extrarecords.com, log into your account, you'll be able to grab the latest version from there. I've got version 1.205 installed here. Steve Duda being the king of updates that he is, has released another four bug fix updates since he released 1.2 about four days ago. So check your account, make sure you grab the latest version. This update is mainly centered around a GUI rewrite with the biggest new feature being the resizable GUI. If you click this little triangle down the bottom right here, you can drag to resize the interface that way. And if you click the logo up here, there's a bunch of preset sizes you can choose from all the way up to 400% if you happen to use an IMAX screen as your monitor. The next new feature is the ability to set the horizontal and the vertical LFO grid sizes independently of each other. If you drag the grid size up and down, they both move together at the same time. But as long as you have double click for typeable values on controls enabled, you can double click and let's say you want eight horizontal by 12 vertical. You can enter eight space 12 and you get eight horizontal, 12 vertical. This is gonna make it even easier to create sequences and arpeggiators inside of Serum. Set the horizontal grid to the note length you want. Set the vertical to 12 for 12 semitones. Modulate master tune by 12 semitones. And then use your step sequencer. Remember hold shift and option or alt to snap to the vertical grid as well. Then you can set up easily your arpeggios and sequences that way. The next new feature is in the wavetable editor under the add remove menu. You have this reduce to option now. This is going to reduce the amount of single cycles within the wavetable by a certain amount. Obviously with the default saw, it's going to do nothing. So I'll load in another wavetable. Now these numbers on the left here, 128, 64, 32, etc., are based on there being 256 individual single cycles within the wavetable. This table here is a morphed wavetable. So it says 256, but there's not actually 256 single cycles. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's 16 actual tables here. So if I say keep half, it's going to leave eight, obviously. It's basic maths, basic fractions. But if I was to now go this one, 64, 164th, how many times does 64 go into eight? Well, none, so there'll be one left over. There won't be four like that number there. If I was to add on a warp mode, quickly render that warp mode, remove it again we now have 256 actual single cycles performing the warp mode that we had so now these numbers on the left will be true so if i go keep half there'll be 128 left as you go less and less it just gets a bit more staggered between the transition that was there. It's a nice way to reduce down your tables and then you can of course morph that and do all sorts of weird and wonderful things inside of Serum. Another feature that's been added, well, it was here before, but apparently it didn't work on Windows. You can create whatever wave shape you want inside of the LFO. If you hold Alt or Option, drag that to the oscillator to have that as your wave table. Apparently this didn't work on Windows before. It's been around on Mac for ages, so, if you're on Windows, you can now do that. The rest of the update has all been bug fixes, fixing things, making it run smoother. In the filter section, under combs, all passes, and reverb, 
it's now let the variable knobs now labeled as damp, which is correct before it just had a dash, but it was damp anyway. So there's a ton of bug fixes in here. As I said earlier, Steve's been releasing frequent updates with bug fixes that have been reported. So log into your account, make sure you get the latest version and I'll catch you in another video.